Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Monoxide channel. Today we are here at 6XD Gearbox in North Carolina and we are here with Clay Stevens. We're here to get a tour of what it is you guys do here. So just show us a little bit around the shop yep. uh, and we'll just kind of go from there. So the building that we're in right now, we're actually not very large. All together we're like 6,000 square feet. This, this side of the building is where we assemble all of our gearboxes after they're manufactured, all the components come over here. Uh, this is where we store all of our inventory. This is our um, receiving and shipping area as well. We can talk about this car real quick. This is uh, this car is owned by Brian Gluck. This is a Factory 5 GTM. It has an LS in it. Right now it has a Porsche transaxle, G50 transaxle in it that um, we are going to replace with our new transaxle. So uh, this will actually be the very first car that gets our new transaxle in it and gets taken to the racetrack and you know beat on we're gonna do some testing the the target is to have a beautiful thumbs up obviously uh, time wise before pri this year this right here i don't even know what customer this is but this is uh this is obviously an air shift this is a standard gearbox um the length is the standard length uh we have another version that i can show you in a minute that is actually just a tick longer okay. that is going to be our um, xdx version and that's our super high horsepower for people that are over the 2000 horsepower 2200 horsepower mark so one of the things you're mentioning in the episode what, what is the standard rated for again uh we rate at 1800 foot pounds um okay. or 2200 horsepower is where we start pushing okay. people to the next next level so between those two numbers uh which one's the more important one the the foot pounds versus the horsepower it's torque uh the a tra a transmission a drive shaft any kind of rotating thing it can hold a certain amount of torque sure it doesn't it doesn't see horsepower the torque the RP horsepower is technically the torque times the rpm yep. so as long as it can handle the rpm it's really just hey can it handle the torque sure so that's it do you know what the limit la, la, la. is of uh, xdx yet no okay <laughs> not yet <laughs> i don't know uh who's gonna who's gonna find that hey, out Aaron miller let's go man let's I break know. one <laughs> I know, right let's tune it up yeah <laughs> i don't know uh obviously it's a chain so the weakest link of a drive train is gonna you know everything else has got to be up there too yeah, so true you're gonna have drive shafts you're gonna have, to have rear ends and axle so a lot of other stuff has to break before he gets to, gets to you right yeah. exactly <laughs> as long as you're as long as you're stronger than everything else you win they rebuild the winner's quick changes bulldog quick changes as well as uh, like dog box, NASCAR dog box, whether it be GSR or Andrews or things like that um, over there on those benches. And then right here, this is your new transaxle then, right? Yes, this is the new transaxle. This is the showpiece that we actually just got back from HPX with. Um, and this is it, this is the, the, the beauty. Like I said, it's got uh, the Porsche 934 or 930 output flanges. The output flanges are above the the uh, input shaft so it's great for lower engines for mid-engine cars for kit cars so i know you're gonna sound like a broken record because we talked about this before the podcast during the podcast several times yeah uh, but what inspired the the need for this uh customers and i mean it's a passion of ours too we wanted to get into that market but customers uh needing it the hole in the market the lead times and just we have so many people asking us to do it mm -hmm. so we did it so one of the things you mentioned this is going to be primarily for gt40s then that's the primary or that's the first application that's what the target right off the bat is is to at least satisfy that market mm -hmm. and it's going to overlap into many other markets though this is a question i meant to ask you during the episode is there a market that you would like to break into but you're not quite sure whether there's a real demand for it like any passion project that you're just like ah it almost makes sense but not quite that happens a lot when customers call because you have so many people that say, man, if you had this, you would you would sell a crap ton. I hear that all the time. And um, I'm not ever total sure of that. Sure. Without, uh, you know, without being in that market myself and at the racetrack myself um, and things like that. One of those may be the off-road. Buggy sound pretty. Uh, I, I don't know off-road because we're... Um, we're not, I just haven't been experienced in the dunes and, and all of that, all that they do. I believe that there is a market there for, um, our gearbox in, in there. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Is there a minimum amount of customers or orders or deposits that you need to pursue an idea or not really? Uh, not really. Okay. It's going to be typically like, okay, these people keep asking for that. We just got to judge the market ourselves. Sure. And Honestly, if, if we think it's there, so I'm not going to do it unless I think it's there. Sure. And then if it's there, 
um, I'm not going to make customers pay for something before we've designed it or before sure. we've put our time into it. If we think it's worthy, we're going to go for it. Another question that I should ask on the show, do you know what this is going to be rated for then? Because I can't imagine GT40 customers are going to be doing 1,800 foot-pounds or anything like that. Uh, same thing, though. Yeah, it, really? it, okay. it could be. Yeah, because it's going to be the same uh, gears as well as um, the, the ring and pinion. We haven't even spoke of that yet. It's laying over here. There's nothing uh, worry <laughs> worrisome about it. It's uh, This was designed and manufactured by Two Works, and um, it's an amazing design. You can tell it's different than any other ring and pinion, the mm -hmm. way that they do the flange on the, the back of the pinion, as well as the ring gear's got a flange there too. Mm -hmm. So long story short, our gears, we already know what they do. We know the way that we're constraining them. The only other thing really in question would be that, and that's it's those things are in um, pro mods that are making crazy horsepower launching off the line. So I think we're good. <laughs> so reliability won't be an issue on yeah. that then. Okay. Right. We're good. Uh, and then, so, and you said this is already available on the market then, right? Officially? It's available. We actually have pre-orders going on right now. We do have a huge discount. Uh, check out our Instagram. Um, there's sure. several posts on the information about that discount. We're going to have our first batch run. And, and then um, obviously if there's anything kind of fine tuning that mm. needs to happen, we're going to do that. Anybody that needs one, quickly they probably need to get on that first batch run because then it, you know it might be a little bit of lead time for the next one sure makes so, sense all these cabinets are full of parts that we keep in stock and then beyond the cabinets the wall of cabinets we come over here and we have uh, this is our build station basically our build area for the 660s so we have um, four stations where we do new builds and rebuilds in the corner over here is our Magnaflux machine. You were asking oh, okay. about that earlier. So this is actually where you would go inside and you basically magnetize the part. You put fluid on it that has particles in it. And when you magnetize it, the particles, you know, gravitate towards the cracks. And then you put it on a blue light and you see where all the cracks are. Hmm. It's nothing new, but it is, you know, still the way to go. Sure. When, it, when you're trying to find failures before they happen. This is the other side of the shop where we do all of the manufacturing. What parts do you manufacture? Is it all just case related? Like uh, you actually... Cases, all the shifter, like shifter related parts, like uh, shift barrels, all the linkages and all the ratchet pieces that okay. are in the, like the pole that, you know, that rotate the shift barrel around. Tons of uh, adaption, any kind of, you know, obviously the external stuff when we're adapting it to something else, that's all done here. So. Is that a challenge when you're trying to figure out where because like on an mt82 the the linkage it's like remote it's not right on the transmission we're on like a tvd6 is that a hard you guys have the ability to move your shifter away from the transmission itself we do have uh different setups of shifters uh different offsets um our standard one actually has a handle it's just a a receiver the handle is just a one inch tube that's okay. bent that can actually rotate around so okay. you can get it. We got two inch offsets, three inch offset, five inch offset. So just just that handle alone, you can go five inches back, five inches forward, and you can rotate it around anywhere you want to, and then lock it down. Right. That's it. That's what, it doesn't get so, nearly as complicated as the H pattern, where some, several bars and things that are. It's a couple of bolts. You rotate it around and tighten them back, and yeah. you're there. And then okay. yeah, since since all you're doing is pushing and pulling on a linkage, you can you can put a the shifter wherever you want to, like in your car, and just run a, a strut rod to it. Okay. Which is actually what we do for the Corvettes. The cor on the Corvettes, the the shifter's all the way up next to the person, obviously, but the transmission's in the back. But we just have a rod running back, and all it's doing is pushing and pulling. So these are all of our CNC machines. Uh, this is actually our newest. We haven't gotten up and running yet. Um, I'm still setting it up, but this is actually a mill turn that can do. Uh, it can do all kinds of stuff. It's basically okay. a five axis. Okay. It's a it's a lathe, but it's also a mill, all built into one. The case, where does it start? Okay, so the case normally goes into this machine first. These are, they're gonna have very similar blocks to this. This is basically uh, a tail housing. This is the way a tail housing starts. A case would be the same material, just a little bit larger. Sure. Uh, and I don't think, there's nothing in here right now. Yeah. Well, the block is in there. I hit start, we'll be back in a few hours, right? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Push start, 
go home. Yeah, they'll take a, they take a couple hours to make each one and they got to go in the machine three times. So you'll basically, you basically uh, rough them and do the first op right now, right there. It'll flip over onto this uh, fixture plate right here. Okay. And it'll do another machining op. And then after that, we'll take it over to so this is Jeff over here, by the way. I see each one has a name. <laughs> My son did that. <laughs> we uh, we had oh, we, just, we just call him ICM one, two, and three, and he's like, they need more names. We need a name. They can't just have numbers. So yeah, tail housing or a case or anything like that would then come into our fourth axis machine, where okay. it would actually uh, machine the rest of that. So real quick, so what's the difference between that machine over here and then what's done over here? It's basically just the fourth axis. Okay. It's just this the, added this unit to make a, a fourth axis. Okay. It's all, but it's all obviously controlled by the same control. So it's just got a lot more functionality. Okay. When you put the G code into the machine, it it can now withstand and know what to do with a lot of these rotation moves and things like that. So it's just got a lot more. Um, you can get to more areas of the part. Since I can go all the way around, I can get to basically four parametric sides and then any angle in between there. Okay. This one over here behind you, is that the same deal then? It's pretty much the same as that one. This is just another vertical. Is any of this stuff here before you started doing the 6XD stuff? When we first started doing the 6XD stuff, uh, we already had two of these machines. So, so we these did were it already doing your valve covers and things like that mm -hmm. beforehand. Okay. Yeah, valve covers and suspension and things bunch of race car stuff. We did a lot of stuff for like uh, NASCAR. They had like all the little hood hinges, motor um, engine mounts, uh, <laughs> splitter. One thing we used to make, I think it's just on the trucks, but they have the splitters that go across the front. And then there's this huge pan that goes across the bottom that connects the splitter to like the rest of the pan. It's just an underbelly thing. They're huge, massive. You actually have to set them up a couple of times in the machine and move them, but you start off with like three quarter plate and when you're done, the thing's super light because it's like thin everywhere. Okay. It basically probably should be built on a sheet metal, but <laughs> we mill them. We've talked to so many people down here. They're just like, oh yeah, I do this for NASCAR, do this for NASCAR. Where we're from, that's, you know, you were in the Mecca here, right? So it's yeah. really weird. You guys just kind of nonchalantly, like, oh yeah, I make parts for NASCARs. It's like, that seems they're, like a really yeah, big deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. You want to see a big chunk of aluminum? You may have noticed that we have a lot of guests on the show who design their own parts or systems, and if you want to learn how to do that as well to make a car faster and safer, or a product stronger and better, you can learn how to do just that with our partners at the High Performance Academy. Using code MINOX to save 55% on their courses, you'll get access to hours and hours of step-by-step -step 3D modeling and CAD content that will teach you how to create and design before you execute. All details in the description below or at the partners page of MINOXIDE.com. Let's get back to the show. Yeah, I was gonna say. we get the I get used to seeing it, but I, I do get comments or people are blown away how big it is. But that that is the yeah. uh, case. So the front, the very front section of the transaxle will be what that is. I'm curious if I sent you a file of his head, what would it cost to <laughs> you know 3D scan? I bet it wouldn't be that hard to get, get a solid little right. I yeah. go with it. Yeah, that's some <laughs> five axis work for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you got like a six axis head, man. Yeah. <laughs> I see a lot of uh, various tooling over here. So, I mean, is that all interchangeable between all the machines or? Uh, the three machine, three verticals are. Okay. And then the mill turn, the Mazak integrex on the, at the very end down there, it has its own tooling, but that's a capto. So every, they all have names, obviously, sure. as far as the tooling itself. All the um, vertical mills that we have here are uh, cat 40. Okay. And then all the tooling that goes into the Mazak is uh, capto. Okay. So touch on that real quick. How long does it take to do a gearbox beginning to end? Every single part, uh, Skylar knows that and I do have it. I can look in the spreadsheet. Uh, what did I, uh, we actually asked me earlier. Yeah, yeah, so the case itself like, was about 11 hours. 11 hours, yeah. And then, so this is probably about another, add 20 minutes of that for this guy. And that's not really including all the um, little intricate uh, shifting components on the inside. Is that so, 11, uh, said, uh, 12 hours, let's call it. Does that include the uh, assembly or is that the next phase? That's the next phase. Okay. Yeah. If it's actually totally 100% like from scratch, like you don't have any sub assemblies already made, then it, it's a day. But okay. normally he's got like a tail housing already made. He's got main shafts that are already shimmed correctly. Like he's got a lot of sub assemblies already done to the point it's about a half a day to get a gearbox together. Okay. 
Uh, and then one of the things we talked about in the episode was like some of your like uh, plug and play kits. Do you store some of that stuff or is that again made to order? No, that's stored. Like if, it, if we advertise that we have it or that it's okay. a package, we have it. Um, sure. Like all the Corvette, all the Viper, all that stuff. Yeah, we do it. Even if it's kind of a one off because of the nature of manufacturing, by the time you design it, program it, fixture it and make your first one, you might as well make three, five, ten more, you know? Because then it's you're paying for material and a little bit of machine time. So the amount of design time and fixturing and programming time actually takes, uh, that's the brunt of it. So you might as well. So normally, even if we do a one-off something, I'll go ahead and make five of them, 10 of them, just so we got them here in case somebody else calls. I know we talked a little bit about uh, the time that goes into R&D, but we never really talked about the cost. What does it cost to R&D uh, an entirely new gearbox setup? <laughs> We don't want to put a dollar amount on that. As far as designing it, yeah, it's, it's a lot of time. It's uh, it's a lot of time. And yeah, if uh, if we were honest with ourselves, we would probably get upset with the dollar amount that sure. takes. So yeah, that's just that's part of just um, hey, let's invest time into this and let's do it. And you know, when we're done, that's what we got. Are we talking hundreds of hours, thousands of hours, thousands? Yeah, yeah. Does that have several iterations? I I can't imagine things are perfect from the first iteration of a CAD model, right? So starting with our first gearbox that we ever did, um, that same exact gearbox could still be could still be good. We made the only iterations that we actually started making were to lighten it up, and then the we made the breather larger. Sure. It used to be like a dash six, now it's a dash eight, because a larger, if you have a breather hose going up and you get if you get some oil in the line and then you build up pressure behind it, it's going to spit the oil out. Unless if you have a large enough line to let it drain back, okay. then it works way better. So uh, we made that change. Uh, bearing pocket changes. We haven't made many revisions sure. from the original, That's awesome. which is pretty cool. Yeah. If they wanted to get a sequential transmission, uh, what makes models series do you support? Uh, as far as just actual uh, applications. Sure. So we have all the Corvettes from C5, C6, and C7. We got basically, mechan I call it a mechanical plug and play package. And it includes drive shaft all the way basically to your hubs. Uh, C7 even includes a, uh, a rear sway bar uh, because where the quick change is, it gets in the way of the factory one. Oh, okay. So we have custom sway bars for that, which actually Gives you quite a, uh, a bit of an upgrade because it's an adjustable link one. So obviously, we talked about Vipers a lot, the Gen, the Gen 5 Vipers. We've got our standard versions for those as well as our XDX versions for the guys that are like just crazy horsepower. They got a Camaro package. A lot of people do ask about four-wheel drive. We have a, a setup with SCS gearbox. They make uh, transfer cases. A lot of their stuff's in off-road. A lot of their stuff's in monster trucks, things like that. So oh, okay. They have a, a version, a part number that mates to our gearbox for us. Um, so we have that solution. We got a Supra uh, Mark IV. package. Yep. Okay. Where the shifter's in the OEM location, the drive shaft's the right link, things like that. And we even got a mount for it already made. So that's what I would call, like I said, a mechanical plug and play package. I think that's getting uh, the bulk of it. Did this thing just switch heads, by the way? The tools? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's got like 30. That was crazy. It's it just got 30 came tools up, in there. Freaking slapped one out and slapped another one in in like a second. It yeah. was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's Sorry, got 30 got tools distracted. in there. It only has 30. We wish we had more. Yeah. <laughs> we got uh, some parts where if we had all the setups on the, in the same machine, mm -hmm. then uh, we would probably need about 40 tools. So we, wow. we actually split it up between two machines. All right. Uh, to go off of his quick question real quick, what's your number one seller? Our biggest seller, just looking at the product itself, is just the standard 6XT that goes okay. behind uh, with the Muncie bolt patterns because there's tons of there's tons of bell housings for that pattern. You can go to full, just about any Ford, any Chevy, uh, Chrysler. It's a front engine, transmissions in the front. So that standard gearbox satisfies a lot of people. On that note, where can people find you guys? Our website is 6xdgearbox.com. Our email is 6xdgearbox at gmail.com. And our Instagram is also 6XD Gearbox as well as Facebook. Well, perfect. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, Clay, thanks for making this happen. Yep. And we'll see you all next time.